Okay, so, uh, some uh, manufacturers of SSD cards uh, uh, provide downloads, and uh, when, when you uh, come down here, you can actually click on uh, English or whatever you are, and it starts downloading. On the bottom of my screen, it starts downloading the zip file. Uh, so, um, and here's the PDF file. You can actually go through this. I found that this wasn't so user friendly when you're going from uh, uh, a large hard drive such as 500 gigs down to the 120 gig hard drive. Uh, okay, so there's issues when you go from big to small. You can go from small to small, small to big, or big to big, but not big to small drives. All right, that's what I suggest. So uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start the migration. See if it works with uh, old operating systems such as Windows XP. Hey everybody, uh, just got a call as a contractor to work on somebody's computer and uh, they want to migrate from, uh, believe it or not, Windows XP, that's with the software the company supports, 500 gig hard drive and they gave me a, a SSD hard drive, uh, one of the um, real thin ones, there's no, uh, no um, uh, moving devices in it, the really good idea, but the one problem it is, is this is a 120 gig drive migrating from 500 to 120 gigs I'm really hoping there's not more than 120 gigs on this and uh, some partitioning softwares do not like going from big to small usually small to big so we're going to see what we can do with this uh, nice thing about the SSD drives they have SATA hookups which is really nice okay so uh, hopefully this uh, works with Windows XP I was told it does so uh, and may, hopefully it'll speed up uh, um, you know how it all operates because there's no moving parts inside the hard drive. All right, I have my uh, bolt drive slaved in back of my um, my test bench uh, computer, and I'm going to power this guy up. Uh, the BIOS should see him. I have two terabytes inside the computer, and then I have the 500 and 120. I'm going to see if the BIOS actually comes up showing that. All right, so uh, it should see everything, and there they are right there so which is which is pretty nice now I do not have screen capturing software uh, on this um, on this computer so I'm going to set the camera to actually uh, see if we can do this all right I have the uh, SATA drive in there this is Windows XP now my uh, customer is a contractor for the government they're still using Windows XP this is the date now is February 2015 and Microsoft no longer supports it that's their choice that's in their hands. I just uh, supply a customer with my services. So they want to switch over to uh, SSD uh, drive, which I'll show that in a bit. Now, my thing is I want to show this booting up, how long it takes up, and then after I'm done uh, migrating the data, we'll see how fast the SSD card is. So uh, here we go. All right, what I did is I started an online stopwatch. Four seconds of this was me going over and pushing the button. All right, so we're going to uh, take four seconds away from the total time of this booting up with the uh, SATA drive. So uh, we're at 21 seconds. There's Windows XP. Let's see if I can get, uh, I can't really get both of them in there, that's fine. We're at 37 seconds. We do have his profile to log in, so uh, I'm going to click the profile, setting up the profile. It's loading the personal profile. This guy has a lot of stuff on his desktop. By the time we get to the desktop, and we're not online, so I'm not worried about the internet, we're at a minute, three seconds, and there's his desktop. A lot of stuff. He does not want me to move anything around or do anything. Uh, the company takes care of malware. So we're looking at one minute, or we'll say 10 seconds, one minute, 10 seconds. So uh, I'm going to clear this. And now what I'm going to do is take the, after cloning uh, or migrating uh, to this uh, SD card, we're going to see just how fast it boots up. All right, since I couldn't uh, clone um, a 500 to a 120, which is coming up as 111.79, I don't know why it did 180 up here, but Hopefully, um, what I can do is go ahead and hit resize again and change that to to uh, seven nine. It should take it. I don't know why it did that. So seven nine. Okay. It's still it's still um, left it at that. 
So I, I'm really hoping uh, I could actually take it a, a one bit further and make it 170. So it fits in there. If it's 180, it'll be. So now it's 170, it's smaller than that. So it should fit on there. I'm going to hit OK on this and I selected resize right here. We did that. So, uh, so process. Okay, and go ahead and, um, and do that. So it's going to leave uh, an allocated part of the, of the 500 gig. The idea is that I'll be able to do the migration now uh, with this because it is a smaller destination hard drive. <laughs> well, it took over an hour to do that, that repartitioning and it was done successful. So, okay, it sees it. Alright, it has to recognize it now. I want to see if I can do the migrating from one to another now. So let's see let's see if we can do it. Okay, this is the one. Alright, that's 11170. Uh, so, uh, select a, a unallocated space. Oh wow, unallocated. Aha. Okay, so this is unallocated, so I need to actually delete this uh, partition. All right, so let me delete that. Yes. Okay, and I had to set that partition. Okay, this should go relatively fast. All right, so I had it set uh, actually formatted. That's the wrong thing to do. Okay, I want to copy partition. Okay, partition quick copy. Select unallocated space. Unallocated right here, that, and next. Okay, so it's going from that onto that. Okay, there it is. Alright, that looks good. Alright, let's see if it actually works. Okay, and proceed. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so and it says F copy of E, that's E. I can rename that when it's done. So we'll see how long this takes. So it's going to take a little bit, so uh, I'm just going to bring it back when it's done. Well, it says uh, complete successfully. I have no idea how long it's been since I was doing something else. Um, so all I have to do is rename that and try it out in the computer and boot it up. So uh, let's go see what happens. Alright, SSD card is the only one in there. It's booting up. I gave it five seconds from the time I hit start over here. Let's see how long it takes to come up. Okay, at this point we're... It's, oh, look at this. Okay. Window screen at 24 seconds. It already passed that. It's at 30, 28 seconds. Okay, the profile is going to come up soon. I'm going to click on the profile. And we're at the desktop. 35 seconds. That's pretty amazing. Even for Windows XP, that is really amazing. So the fact is, SSD um, drives are faster than the hard drive, probably because of the Seek. I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. All right, the difference between uh, SSD cards. SSD card is all static card. Right, let me focus a little bit here. All right, it's a it's a static card. It's a uh, no moving parts inside of it. A hard drive, like this one I have apart, has discs that rotate. And your data is on these discs with a head that bounces back and forth and seeking everything. So this guy's spinning at 7200 RPM and you have mechanical devices seeking. It takes time to do that. Called a seek time. Alright, you don't have that on here. So it works faster. Alright, so hope you like the video. This is a Dell computer. Doesn't matter what model or make really that is even a Dell computer. But this is Windows XP. That means 8, Windows 10 will run faster if it's on an SSD card. Alright, now, if your SSD card fails, chances are we can't get anything off the SSD card. If this drive fails, as long as it spins and the head moves, we can get the data off. Even some places can uh, get the data off if the head doesn't move. Alright, data is always on that record, that card, that disk. So nothing on that if it fails. Alright, subscribe, see more videos. Take care, bye.